February 26, 2024, financier, philanthropist, and leader of the distinguished Rothschild Empire, Lord Jacob Rothschild, 4th Baron Rothschild, passed away at the age of 87. His family officially announced his demise in a statement on Monday, portraying the grandfather, who held various influential financial and philanthropic positions, as a significant and commanding figure. His career in finance began in 1963 at the family bank, N.M. Rothschild & Sons. He later diverged from his family to establish, alongside others, what is presently known as St. James's Place, originally named the J. Rothschild Assurance Group in 1980. Hailing from Berkshire, Lord Rothschild received his education at Eton College and pursued history at Christ Church College, Oxford University. He served as the chairman of RIT Capital Partners, a prominent investment trust listed on the London Stock Exchange until the year 2019. In addition, he held various positions, such as deputy chairman at the former BSKB Television, director of RHJ International, now recognized as BHF Kleinwort Benson Group, and a council member for the Duchy of Cornwall during the tenure of the then Prince of Wales. According to the Sunday Times Rich List, the Rothschilds are believed to possess an estimated fortune of approximately 825 million pounds. Aside from banking and finance, the family is known to support numerous philanthropic projects around the world, both related to Jewish causes and non-Jewish ones. Being one of the wealthiest families in the world, they are also known to have luxurious properties. In this episode, we are going to take a peek at the luxurious real estate properties of the late Lord Jacob Rothschild. Okay, let's begin. First on our list is the most famous real estate property, the Wadsden Manor of the Wadsden Estate. But we have to pop your bubble to inform you that Wadsden Manor, the center of the estate, is not owned by Lord Jacob or the Rothschild family. The Rothschild family, including Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild, originally owned Waddesdon Manor. In 1957, Jacob Rothschild's uncle, James A. de Rothschild, donated the estate to the National Trust. Since then, the National Trust has owned and managed Waddesdon Manor, ensuring its preservation and public access. This transition marked a shift from private ownership to being held in trust for the benefit of the public. Anyway, we are still going to take you for a stroll in the Waddesdon Manor. Waddesdon Manor rises before you. It's a French chateau straight from a fairy tale, but built in the English countryside. The architecture is a stunning blend of Renaissance and Gothic styles, capturing the elegance of 16th century France. The manor has 45 luxurious rooms, each filled with priceless art and rich history. As you enter, you'll be greeted by the stunning blue staircase, which is not really blue, decorated with intricate woodwork and eye-catching walls, leading you directly to the center of the house. While not the most expansive among Waddesdon's chambers, the breakfast room emanates a charming ambiance, distinguished by one of the house's most beautiful chandeliers. Historically, this room catered to male guests during breakfast, contrasting with female guests who preferred the intimacy of their own quarters for their morning repast. As you exit the breakfast room, the transition leads you into the East Gallery, forming one half of a pair of symmetrical passageways flanking the Oval Hall. This intricate interplay of spaces enriches the narrative of Waddesdon Manor, showcasing both its architectural finesse and the nuanced social conventions of its past occupants. The West and East Gallery are both highlights of the manor, stretches impressively and features an outstanding collection of Dutch and Flemish paintings. The Red Drawing Room offers a cozy retreat, its warm tones contrasting the vibrant Chinese porcelain on display. The morning room welcomes visitors with its delicate pastel hues and houses a collection of exquisite Sèvres porcelain. The drawing room captivates with its rich red tones, showcasing portraits and tapestries that whisper tales of centuries past. The dining room at Waddesdon Manor is spacious and its architecture is a blend of Renaissance and Gothic influences. A large dining table with matching chairs adorned with exquisite tableware serves as the centerpiece. The room features ornate moldings and decorative paneling, creating a grand and sophisticated atmosphere. Artworks, 
tapestries and fine furnishings contribute to the overall lavish aesthetic, making it a formal and elegant space for hosting grand dinners and social events. The turret suite, now called the Blue Dining Room at Waddesdon Manor, created between 1990 and 1995, is a harmonious blend of history and contemporary elegance. Featuring paneling from 1750-1760, Art Deco console tables, and a captivating chandelier, the suite narrates a story of curated aesthetics. Recent acquisitions of paintings, silver wine chariots, and delicate mice and porcelain contribute to its timeless charm, creating a curated canvas where history, art, and contemporary living converge. The state bedroom at Wadsden Manor. This luxurious room, rich in history, features regal furnishings and exquisite decor. The room boasts a lavish four-poster bed adorned with luxurious fabrics, capturing the essence of aristocratic living. The walls showcase intricate paneling and ornate details, creating a backdrop of timeless elegance. Large windows allow natural light to grace the room. The fountain bedroom, also called the pink bedroom, adorned with intricate floral patterns, evokes a sense of natural beauty and carries a subtle Victorian charm. The careful detailing creates an atmosphere of warmth and comfort, inviting guests into a space that feels both timeless and enchanting. In contrast, the white or portico bedroom exudes a different aesthetic. Embracing simplicity and elegance, this room is designed with clean lines and a subdued color palette. The result is a serene atmosphere that promotes relaxation and tranquility. The white bedroom provides a refined retreat where the absence of elaborate details allows for a sense of calm sophistication, offering guests a peaceful and restful experience. This bedroom at Waddesdon Manor was once occupied by Winston Churchill during his visit. He personally requested this room because it was the only one with a balcony. However, Churchill was not the only male guest to prefer this room. The balcony allowed them to evade the indoor smoking ban. The smoking room at Waddesdon Manor, originally part of the bachelor's wing, houses Baron Ferdinand's Renaissance Museum collection, now known as the Waddesdon Bequest, at the British Museum. Treasures include a silver gilt cup, ebony and ivory figures on horseback, Limoges enamels, bohemian cut glass tumblers, a rock crystal cup, and 16th century portraits. This curated space beautifully blends history with contemporary elegance. Waddesdon Manor's gardens, designed with inspiration from the gardens of Versailles, boast a south-facing parterre terrace. This terrace leads from the house to the parterre, featuring vibrant flower beds centered around the frog fountain. The aviary built by Ferdinand in 1889 once housed exotic birds, and today it adds to the symmetry of the gardens with its structure and surrounding flower beds. Beyond the parterre and aviary, explore a rose garden, additional fountains, sculptures, and picturesque vistas throughout the estate. Okay, now let's move on to the next property. Welcome to Lord Jacob Rothschild's world-renowned Flint House at Waddesdon Manor Estate in England. This magnificent winter house is a stunning addition to the historic Waddesdon Estate. The Flint House's architecture showcases its winter character with a quartz skin that ranges from dark and glassy at the bottom to bands of fading grays, culminating in the chalky whites of the stepped roofline. As you step into the sitting room, you will see the breathtaking view of Waddesdon Manor. The Flint House is designed by Charlotte Skeen Catling of Skeen Catling de la Pena. The house draws inspiration from the site's topography, with its monolithic wedge-shaped structure resembling a giant cross-section of Earth's crust. The property is the latest gem in Waddesdon's crown and serves as a home for visiting scholars on a residency program focused on digital exhibitions. Comprising two structures, the main building and a studio annex, the house forms a valley that resembles an inverted pyramid. The architecture seamlessly blends ancient and modern references, evoking influences from Neolithic earthworks, ancient Greek amphitheaters, and Mayan ruins to the modernist allure of Casa Malaparte on Capri. The use of flint as the primary building material adds a unique touch to the house. Craftsmen, 
led by David Smith of the Flintman Company, carefully selected rocks from five different quarries. Inside, Flint House continues to captivate with its private and introspective living spaces overlooking a pond. The study, separated from the sitting room by a reflective river, creates a semi-internalized cave with stone walls. Illusionist tricks, like a glass-backed fireplace positioned to make flames appear to float on water, add a touch of whimsy to the aristocratic atmosphere. This unique property, owned by Lord Jacob Rothschild, showcases an impressive blend of different architectural styles that seamlessly complement each other. The Ethrope House, known as the Pavilion, is Lord Jacob Rothschild's private home. The gardens, redesigned by Lady Mary Keene in 1990, continue to flourish, providing vegetables, fruit, and flowers for the estate. Notably, the walled garden features various sections, including a vegetable garden, herb garden, Mediterranean pot garden, rose garden, and a late flowering herbaceous border. Glass houses are used for growing a variety of plants, including early cherries and tomatoes. Ithrope, a hamlet and country house in the parish of Wadisdon, Buckinghamshire, was bought by a branch of the Rothschild family in the 1870s and remains in their ownership today. The hamlet is rich in history, with medieval roots and a deserted medieval village nearby. The name Ithrope has Anglo-Saxon origins, meaning island farm, referencing an island in the River Thames near the hamlet. The medieval village of Ithrope, dating back to at least 1309, had a manor house, and remnants of the past, such as earthen banks and ditches, are visible. The mansion underwent significant changes over the centuries. Notably, it was extended in 1610 by Dorothy Pelham. Later, William Stanhope embellished Ithrope House around 1750, adding features like a grotto and a bridge. However, the house was eventually demolished in 1810 to 11. In 1875, Alice de Rothschild purchased the manor at Ithrope. She commissioned the construction of a new house designed by architect George DeVay. Due to health considerations, the house was built without bedrooms, serving as a space to house collections and entertain guests during the day. The house known as the Pavilion or the Water Pavilion is an architectural blend of Jacobean and French Renaissance styles. It is constructed using red brick, stone dressings, turrets, twisting chimneys, and gables. The rooms are decorated with French paneling and furniture. And Alice designed ornamental gardens around the house that spanned over 30 acres. Following Alice's death in 1922, the pavilion passed to James Armand de Rothschild and his wife Dorothy. In 1957, James donated the Waddesdon Manor to the National Trust, and Dorothy made substantial alterations to the pavilion. In 1988, the estate and pavilion were inherited by Jacob Rothschild, and it remains the only one of the Buckinghamshire Rothschild's seven houses in Rothschild's hands. Unfortunately, we can't find pictures inside the actual home of Lord Jacob Rothschild due to the lack of media. It is well known that he is very private about Ithrope. We clarify our approach to this video regarding Lord Jacob Rothschild and his family's real estate holdings. The Rothschild family is known for being extremely private, and as a result, details about their ownership of certain properties are not readily available or easily verified. While we are aware of other real estate properties linked to the Rothschilds, the level of ownership and specific details remain uncertain due to their secretive nature. The family has historically kept a low profile, making it challenging to obtain comprehensive and verified information about the extent of their holdings. We respect the Rothschild family's privacy, so we don't claim to know exactly how much of those properties they own. We aim to be accurate and open, but we must balance that with their strong desire for privacy. Thanks for understanding that we can't give you all the nitty gritty details about their real estate stuff. Lord Jacob Rothschild's life and the grandeur of the Rothschild family's estates are definitely out of the ordinary properties that we tackled here. Our tour through Wadesden Estate, Flint House, and Ithrop House offers a glimpse into the private life of Lord Jacob Rothschild, a titan in finance and philanthropy who is a very controversial man in history. As we bid farewell to this exploration, a lasting impression of the Rothschild's wealth and influence is etched in our memories. Whether we love them or hate them, 
no one can deny the beauty of the properties that we have shown in this episode. Before we wrap things up, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts about the properties of Lord Jacob Rothschild that we have showcased? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you loved this exclusive peek into Monique's luxury homes and lifestyle, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Ring the notification bell and be the first to see my newest content. Once again, this is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat. Bye.